Today I'm gonna answer Stephanie's Montesinos question which she left in the video Puerto Rican in Montreal. If you haven't watched that one, I'm gonna leave a link in the description box just in case you wanna watch it. So she basically asked me more details about how the immigration process went through. So I'm gonna talk specifically about getting a study permit, which was what I got in order to be studying here in Canada. So I'm gonna use my MacBook to go onto the website for the Canadian immigration. Okay, so I'm in the cic.gc.ca, which is the immigration website. I'm gonna go in English, and here in the web page, you can see that they have information about anything and everything you can imagine. So if study permit is not the thing that you would need, this is still the page to go in order to find out more information about what exactly you need. So I'm going to go all the way down until study and get a study permit and what you need to study in Canada you will see that the first thing it this page shows you is what is a study permit and it goes into detail that that study permit is what's going to allow you to come from another country into Canada to pursue a degree and you have to be enrolled in a designated learning institution you can click on that link and learn about all the institutions that are considered a designated learning institution in my case, I'm at Université du Québec à Montréal. Here it tells you that you always have to be enrolled in that designated learning institution, that you have to be making progress towards your degree, and that you have to respect those conditions, if there were any, in your study permit. And in addition, once that study permit expires, you need to leave the country when that expires. Depending on your case, there, may, there might be other conditions. I'm going to talk specifically about mine, so I'm not going to go through all of this. So I encourage you to go to cic.gc.ca to go thoroughly through all this information, learn about the different uh, exceptions for people who don't need a study permit, if you're doing a six months, and so on. That's all in their webpage and etc. information that you can get. Okay, so how do we apply for this study permit? You need to have the acceptance letter, that's number one, having the acceptance letter for the designated learning institution. In my case, I had to wait until UCAM issued my acceptance letter in which I was accepted into the Propia Dutique, which is a step uh, given that <laughs> I'm from an engineering background, applying into a business school, I had to take a whole year of basic classes in order to be equipped to take on business classes. So first, acceptance letter. Then you must provide evidence that you have money to stay in Canada. I'm gonna go more into that in, a, in just a few seconds. And here also you can see how you can apply for a study permit. If you're inside, if you're outside, you can even apply online and have all your documents through your portal in the CIC website and other other documents that you can also provide to during your process. Now I'm gonna go specifically into the documents you need before applying. So once more, you need the acceptance letter from your designated learning institution. You need proof of identity. You need proof of financial support. The proof of financial support in my part, at least when I was submitting my application, this one was the most tedious of all, 
because I need to provide I needed to provide a lot of documentation. So, what did I provide it? I provided my bank account statements, my mother's bank account statement, Adam's bank account statements, a letter from my mother saying that in case that anything happened, she would be able to pass me money on my account and the same for Adam, also a letter from their employer saying that stating that they were uh, permanent employees in my case since I wasn't a permanent employee. I actually quit my job before coming here. I did not have that, but in case you have, then you would have that letter stating that you are an employee and you have a steady income. And if you're planning on coming to Quebec, to the province of Quebec, there are certain things that apply specifically for the province of Quebec. One of them being the Certificat d'Acceptation de Québec, which is also known as the CAQ, C-A-Q, in French CAQ. And this is basically a certificate saying that you're allowed to enter the province of Quebec. Given that my university was Université du Québec, University of Quebec, I had to apply for that one. And that one takes a while to come. So basically, I got my letter of acceptance, I applied for the CAQ, I had to wait about 30 days while I got the CAQ. After I got the CAQ, I submitted all my documents for my study permit in Canada. And while I was waiting for my CAQ, I gathered all the financial proof and all the other documents I needed for my study permit in order to make the process faster. So yeah. I got that letter and then I sent everything with that because you need the Seaku to provide it to the government of Canada. If we go down and proof of financial support, you will see that for other provinces that are not Quebec, there is a specific amount that you must have. You, you must provide evidence that you will have access to that specific amount and if you have family members coming with you, you need extra money on top of that. It divides it by the amount that has to be annually and the amount that has to be monthly. And the same goes to Quebec. You can see that it's a little bit expensier and this does not account for the tuition. So it's the tuition and on top of the tuition, that's the money you need to have to live while you are in Canada. So basically, that's it. That's the process. I, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I had to go through this process twice. Once for my propia duetique, I think I did mention that. And then for once I was finally officially accepted into the PhD because I comply with my propia duetique uh, a priori. Um, I had to go again through that process. The first um, study permit, I applied, being in Puerto Rico, I applied first to the SEACU, then for the study permit, the study permit, it arrived a letter at my house in Puerto Rico saying that I was pre-approved for the study permit, but that that wasn't the study permit. So I had to go from Puerto Rico to Montreal and at the airport in customs, in the border, I had to provide the agent that letter and also I had to go through a set of questions uh, specifically because I had I came with my cat so I needed to provide documents for him and I also came with Adam so we did all of that the same day we came but this takes time. If you're planning to do the same process, make sure that if you get at in, in our case, we got at, to Montreal at around 11 p.m. And we left the airport around 3 to 4-ish, I think. If not, I we can check a blog I did about that moment if you want to know more. But basically, it took a long time to be in the border and have the physical study permit that is stapled into your passport. Now, for the second time, I gathered all the documents I applied for the SEACU. I did that while being in Canada before it expired. So I got the SEACU. After the SEACU, I gathered all my documents and I went to the border. But you need to make sure if you do this that 
all your documents are in line because if you go to the border and something is wrong and you're not supposed to be in Canada, they can take you out. So I went to the border, everything was good, and I had to wait around a day to get all my documents. It was longer because I did not submit something a priori. I actually went with all the documentation there. What I did submit a priori was the SEACU. Basically, that's it. That's the process, a brief walkthrough. I really suggest and encourage you to look into more details at cic.ca for more details and all the different permits that you could get in order to come here to study or even as a applying for residency. And if you have any questions, any other concerns that you think I might be able to answer and if I am not able to answer them, I can look for the answers. But yeah, if you have any other questions, leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Missed the previous video? Click on that clip right there. If you want to get more videos, click on that subscribe button. Bye!